So pick your name in, and then they say what in the title of the of that section. Pick your name in, and raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yes. Yes. Picture word interference. Okay. Picture word. What does it mean? Picture name in. Picture word interference. Why? Does it mean that we have here two types of speech errors, or what's the story? Picture name in. Let's see how it is. Yes, picture name and word interference with. Okay? Yes. Um, it expresses the concepts and how the songs are activated to make up the. Now, the why, why do we have this title like this? Picture name in. And then you have and word interference. What? What is it? Picture word interference. Yes? Studies. Uh, yes? Maybe, uh, Not maybe. Not maybe. I was asking you to... Uh, no, no, no. You no. haven't, right? No. no. Yeah. Yes. Do I? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the confusion between the, the shape of the... the Picture or is it the, the picture and the, the name of it? Mm -hmm. And the name of it, okay, yes. Uh, yes, uh, so, yes, uh, Emma. So, uh, there is a problem. You have the picture in mind, but how to express the picture uh, uh, is the problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Picture, word, interference. Okay. I think we are we are talking here about two two things. Okay, so picture name is that when you when you see something and see what I'm saying, and you kind of recall the the shape or the name of the picture. The word uh, picture word interference is that when when you are given uh, a word and misuse another, or if you are thinking about the word and then use another words to express that word, which actually not correct. Okay. The example there was an experiment which is just like uh, I think of. Something like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, for example, you're given a chart with colors, and then inside the colors, you're you are mentioning another name of the color. For example, you're presenting yellow, and then um, you're given blue inside the other name, blue inside the other one. Try to, to push the uh, the person who watched that. Okay, so you, you project the color with the name and try to tell them, try to read the name yeah. of the color. That's the, the, the experiments how they are conducted. Yeah. Okay, so that's people how tend to make people tend to make mistakes by, for example, instead of saying yellow, they say green. Yeah. And because the green is is written. Yeah. yeah. So we are approaching to the name of the box. So we're talking here about a sickness, illness. Yeah, it's a psychological illness. Does something work on that? It's a psychological illness uh, caused because of such a damage in the world. Yes, so this is something we will talk about there if we talk about it. We talk related to aphasia and damage yeah. of the brain and the kinds of problems. It's normal, okay, normal linguistics, which we will see briefly at the end of our psycholinguistics. But I want something, yes. Sorry, I'm going to read the, the chapter. But I want for information outside the, yeah. um, the book concerning speech errors and slips of the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I look for, for the copy book of last year because we, we studied, we have studied the same yeah, linguistic so for, for, uh, for definition, for example, slips of the time. No, the this, 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 of this picture maybe. No, we did. Okay. So anybody can tell me the story, okay? So here, it's the picture naming is the uh, experiment, okay? Experiment, when scientists and researchers are sitting down with informants and you give them, like for example, one of the ways they are done, normal way is give them pictures of things that then the informants have to name the things that they have seen. But of course there are three ways how they do this. We're going to see that later, okay? In this uh, presentation. Uh, but then you have the other component is the the theory. It is the analysis of the experiment itself. So 
It is the analysis of picture word interference. Okay? The picture word interference. Is the picture word interference built smoothly? Or are there any problems in there? Uh, what kinds of problems can happen and why? Okay? Yes, Wilson? Yeah, I think that when, for example, you have um, a picture, you choose a picture, uh, you choose a word for a picture that is similar to the object. For example, yes, this is. Yeah. For example, uh, you see a picture of how you might see, you semantic. might say mouse. Yes, semantic, semantic, okay, yes, this semantic condition, okay, that's because the, the way the experiment of picture naming is done, there are, there are three ways. You send them the condition that you give the informant. You can give a semantic condition, you can give a phonological uh, condition, so we're going to see the detail. But let me just take that picture word interference, they are called like this, studies, picture word Interference studies. So these studies, they use picture naming in order to see how the interference between picture and word go. Okay. Okay. And in fact, it's, it is uh, it goes hand in hand with the speech production process because when you say the picture, it's, you have the mental abstract uh, semantic concept, and then in word you have the phonological manifestation. Okay. Somebody was raising hand. Yes. I just wanted to say that he. Speed, <coughs> the speed of activating two concepts, the, as, a, as, a, mm -hmm. as a Sophia said, the mouse and the house. Mm -hmm. yeah. the speed, yeah. Yes, that's right. So we're going to see those kinds of uh, conditions. There are three kinds of conditions there. So early studies in picture recognition and picture naming show that people take longer times to recognize and name concepts that were used less frequently in speech or writing. So here, you see one of the uh, similarities between these kinds of experiments and their results at the tip of the tongue. Usually, the word, the picture word interference, and you see the, the picture word interference, sometimes it is smooth and nice and you have no problem. When you have frequent words, frequent words, but you have problems there, people can't say something or for whatever reason, they can't name the picture, okay? So the word, the picture word interval has problems, and this has to do with less frequent words and things, okay? So it's the same feature. People took less time to recognize and name the more frequent concepts. So when the words and concepts and pictures, they are very frequent words, okay? They take less time, yeah. But immediately they tell, that's X, that's Y, that's whatever, okay? But when they are less frequent, they have problems. The word or the picture word interference goes slowly and with difficulties. Thus, the amount of time it takes people to plan a spoken response appears to be affected more by how often they produce the collection of sounds that labels a concept and less by how often they think about a specific concept. So it has to do with the usage, not the, uh, it has to do with the uh, thinking. Okay, let me go back to this again. Thus, the amount of time it takes people to plan a spoken response appears to be affected more by how often they produce. How often they produce. Not think. Maybe you think of it, you see it, and so on. But it depends on how often you use it, the usage. If you use it very rarely, so you will have problems, the word or the picture word interference will be very slow. But if you use it very, very frequently, so you will have problems there, yes. This uh, maybe has necessarily to do with, with the articulation of the word. Yeah. You, may, you, may, you may think about the word. You may have the word in your mind, yeah. but you cannot articulate it simply because you do not use it too well. So yeah. You are thinking about it. Yes. So, and this is one evidence for the articulatory, <coughs> the phonological component. Okay? This is an evidence okay? that shows that there is this, concept, this component okay? in the speech production process. Additional research 
deals with how concepts are organized and how they are related to one another in long-term memory. And here we come to those conditions. Do we activate just the concept we need right when we need it? So the, the researchers, this is what they try to ask, to answer, to ask this question. Do we activate just the concept we need right when we need it? It's just a question of concepts going on. Or do we need to sift through a set of activated concepts before we can select the one we need? Okay? So the research, picture naming research claims that concepts do compete with one another for selection during the, pr uh, the process of speech production. When you are, so it, it's, this is how psycholinguistics happens. And the research, psycholinguistic research tries to explain the speech production process. So they tell you that in the mind of the speaker, he has only one word, and he, then he directly says it. But here it says the op opposite. There are different concepts, and they go in the mind, so you see, it explains what goes on in the mind, and then they choose and then speak whatever relevant word. Okay? So how do they know this? How do they know this? Okay? Picture naming, let me put them all. Okay? Picture naming research use three types of conditions, stimuli for the naming of the pictures presented to the informant. So you have a number of informants there, sitting, and then they show them pictures, right? But then those pictures, they are not random. They are organized, very well organized, very well selected and chosen and so on. So you have a number of words that are organized on the basis of identity condition. There are others who are based on the semantic condition. And there are others who are based on the phonological condition. House, mouse. Phonological condition. condition. Okay? So on the basis of all this, so they try to determine okay, what goes on in the mind. They try to answer the question, how will presentation of a potentially competing stimulus affect access to and production of the picture name? The semantic condition, this is the result, the semantic condition produces interference effects whereby people are so, please have somebody to read this. Yes, I'm learning from you. Yes. The semantic condition produces interference effects whereby people are slower to name pictures when the when they overlapping word has uh, a meaning similar to the object in the picture. Yes, so what does it say here? So, when the word is. Which is very slow. The word picture or sorry, the picture word interference when you have this semantic condition, that is to say a number of things. Okay? And these things they share one thing. The meaning is related. The, the phonology is different, yes. identity is different, maybe one to them see a field, another one to another field. But the only common thing is semantics. The semantics, the words are very clear, how apartment, how things like this. So this has to do with the meaning, right? So in this kind of experiment, when you have a semantic condition, the speaker finds it or takes time to produce the word, to activate the word, or to say, or to name that object. Okay? So this is the, the meaning. So semantic condition has more impact on the word, picture word interference. However, when the overlapping word has a similar sounding name to the picture, people name the object in the picture faster. House mouse. Okay? There is a phonological condition there. So, this kind of phonological condition makes it easier for the informants or whoever to say the words faster. They don't take much time. But when the 
when the words are semantically related and uh, similar, they take much time. So here, what does this mean here? Yes, please. You want to say something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I have twins in, in my class. Mm -hmm. Identical twins. I can make the difference between them now. Hopefully. The problem is that they are both, uh, both their names are, one of them is Bohemid Ilyas, the other is Bohemid Enes. So, sometimes they want to say Ilyas and I say Enes. And then, but it's just because the names similar. are similar. Not only the names, but also the faces. This are is the same. So, you have <laughs> more than one condition there. <laughs> yes. So, uh, but you still have difficulty, or yeah. you say. No, no, I still have difficulty just to, uh, to utter the name quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if I reconsider myself, I, I utter the name. Yes. Uh, yes. So, there is some similarity between this and uh, your case. But let me recapitulate. So, when you have this kind of research and you have this kind of evidence, it clearly shows that there isn't only one, the speech production doesn't contain only one component. There is no, there isn't only one place for speech. No, there is one related to semantics and there is one related to phonology. So you see the way how things go? Okay. So therefore, picture naming research that relied on picture word interference experiment reinforced the distinction between conceptual meaning or semantic processes and phonological encoding processes in the speech production. Okay?